Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 287 for Tuesday, January 12th, 2021. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians here in Durham, New Hampshire, quarantining like a boss. I'm Dave Hamilton. You're in Napomo, California. It's Paul Kent. Yeah, man. How uh, how goes? Uh, how goes? So a couple a couple things going. So House Rockers are working on a video project. Okay. So ten guys trying to record their parts to a song. Russ. Laid down a drum track. Nice. Steve layered a bass, and we started with that foundation. I added a guitar part and a vocal part. Nick added a, a keyboard part. And then I asked the horns to do it, and the horns said, well, we need one guy, you know, for tuning, you know, to kind of do it. So mm. our tenor sax guy laid down his part, and now it's with uh, four other horns and and our rhythm guitar player, Simon. And um, one of the horn guys is the guy who's been sick, and his horn has actually been out for repair, coincidentally. Oh, and, you know, so we're just trying to get the, the basic audio track done. And then we're trying to find something unique to do for video. So, you know, a lot of people have done this sitting at the at the kitchen table, you know, a bunch of squares on a screen type of thing. Yep. And I'm wondering, since our group is, you know, hasn't done one of these yet, whether we should do something a little more clever, a little more interesting from a video, you know, a, a film standpoint. So... Uh, we're we're kind of talking about some ideas. We'll see what we come up with. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. So we got that going, um, and then we got another song that, that we're talking about doing. Um, I'm going to do a stream on this Friday night. I haven't done one in a while, and just kind of feel nice. Feel the need to get a little connection. I mean, it's you know, it's funny. Even the scrolling comments, you know, in the moment, they're they're actually quite rewarding, and it's nice to sort of interact with people who you know, and you know maybe get a couple new people listening to you. So I'm going to do a stream, uh, solo acoustic stuff. I've been doing. Yeah. That stream, uh, that stream stuff. I, like there are ways of doing it that make it extremely engaging. I, I think I've talked on this show a couple of times about how uh, we wound up watching. I think all of Trey Anastasio's, he did like eight weeks in a row at the beacon with his band and between songs, they would just, you know, read the comments and chit chat. He had somebody moder moderating the comments because, you know, he, he gets a lot more than you were. Quite a few. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but you know, but by and large, it was really, it, it was very interactive and it was perfectly, it was much better than sitting and watching a concert video that was like a video of a band playing a concert in an arena because that's a very different energy level, right? Than a show that is truly tailored for someone's living room. Right. Yeah. And and you can have a lot more dead air between songs. In fact, people want that dead air between songs. They want to be able to talk with themselves. They want to, you know, hear you talk a little bit. It, it it really felt like watching someone at band practice. Like they were That's having a good way to put it. Right. They were having fun. I mean, they were performing these songs, but but you know, they knew like there was no pretense about what was going on here. Right? Like there, we all know there's no one else in the room with you. And we yeah. all know there's no one else in the room with me, you know, or, or if there are, it's the same people I've been with, you know, for a while. So, you know, that kind of thing, we've really found it interesting. And I, I, I think there's ways that we can all leverage that, you know, just, well, like you know, leaning point, in on uh, what it is. Yeah. What it is. You got to hold it up to the light, right? Cause right. <laughs> The performing musician, for the performing musician, harnessing, directing, creating the energy in a room is not the tool that you get when you're doing these things, right? Right. But but intimacy is. And so, you know, however, whether you're, yeah, what, what, whether you're performing for 40 friends or you're, you know, regionally known or nationally, or you know. It's the same. What are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, the, the task is the same. The, the medium of these streaming shows is not about energy, which is what you go to a live show for, right? Con right? You know, that type of thing. And the connection of the crowd. This is all about harnessing and fostering that intimacy. Sometimes it's about the stories you tell about the songs. Sometimes, you know, it's about if it's a band doing it, you know, like you said, letting someone into your rehearsal space is kind of an intimate thing to do. 
And, you know, like I know the ones that I do, you know, the people who are sheltering in place, it's an opportunity for them to say hi to their friends. And, yep. you know, there's some, right. You know, yeah. The chat room chatter. takes on a life of its own, too. Uh, yeah. 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 I, in fact, I would say that expect that to happen for anybody that hasn't done this yet. You know, expect that to happen and don't feel the need to insert yourself into all of it. Like if somebody is asking you a question or you see something that's funny, you want to comment on that's very natural do that, but know that you're the people in the chat room are going to take things and go in their own direction. And, and that's okay. Like, don't get in the way of that. Just let it happen. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're kind of, you know, performer slash master of ceremonies host. Yeah. You're kind of the host. Right. You're the gravity for this thing, but it's not all yeah. necessarily all about you. In fact, it's all about them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's interesting. Yep. Yeah. We're, um, wanna, okay, go ahead. go ahead. No, I was going to say, we're doing a, um, we've decided it's, we? it's time to do a fling rehearsal. Fling. Good. Yeah. Well, sort of. Um, it, it, it hit me just yesterday as I was, I'm teaching a class, uh, next month, starting next month for the spring semester at the university of New Hampshire. Uh, one of the perks of, and I'm very much looking forward to it. It's the business of podcasting, which I, uh, I think will be a real blast and we're going to create a podcast together. It'll be fun. Um, one of the perks slash requirements of teaching at the University of New Hampshire is participating in their weekly COVID testing. Now, anybody that's listened to this show knows I've already been doing weekly COVID testing, but it's been kind of a pain in the neck because I've had to arrange it for myself and deal with, you know, the variety of things. We're fortunate around here that we have good testing options, but it's, you know, all very much, uh, you know, I have to go make it happen. UNH over the summer set up their own on-site PCR test lab which gets results back. Most PCR tests come back within about two to six days. UNH's test results come back within about six hours, mm. which is, it's, it's outstanding. I mean, it really is. It's, you know, I mean, it's almost like having a rapid PCR test lab, uh, you know, in your backyard. I mean, so, so mm. uh, three of us in fling are work at UNH in some capacity. And so it hit me the other day as I was dropping off my test. I was like, you know, I'd, I think I'd feel okay about having the guys in the studio. Like, like my daughter has some friends. She goes to the same school and she has some friends that she's remained in kind of a, an extended bubble with, if you will, because they're all testing and basically staying home with their families. And, and she's had some of those friends over. She's gone over to their house and we've all felt very comfortable with that. I'm like, wait, if I feel comfortable with Sky's friends coming over, why wouldn't I feel comfortable with my friends coming over if they're in the same bubble, you know, doing the same thing. And, and so Mike and Russ and I have all been basically laying low and not doing anything. And so we're going to get together after we test next week, we all homogenized our tests to Mondays. And, um, and so the plan is to get together next Monday night and, and jam here in the studio, which, which should be That's fun. Great. Yeah. 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 But now that, now that we're having this conversation, I'm wondering, probably not for the first one, but if we do this again, like, should I set up a camera and a screen and, you know, live stream some portion of this to, you know, have that interaction? I don't know. I'm not going to do it for this first one, but, but it, right. you know, as we're having the conversation, the, the idea is, is starting to percolate here, which is cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to tell you about a, a fun conversation I had. So you know, I've moved to this new area and I'm trying to figure out what's what and, you know, where, where do people play and how do you find other players? And so I've had a couple of uh, um, friends from where I used to live who have, you know, who work in the music industry, hmm. who knew some people down here that they introduced me to. And, and, you know, just a little bit of networking and, you know, any chance I get to you know talk to another musician. So I, I had a phone call with a guy who coincidentally lives about a half a mile from me, just totally randomly sure he was introduced by this mutual friend and he's been a musician in this area for quite a while and and uh you know has, has played with a lot of people and, and actually i found him to have a very um a very useful global perspective on the scene down here and i and i only bring this up because it might be interesting anybody else who listens to this who's you know going to try and start networking in a new area, you know, if this describes some of the things you may find. So, so what this fellow said was, you know, this is not a major metropolitan area. So, right. you know, good, good side men can be found for, you know, a hundred bucks a gig is a pretty standard, you know, if you get more than that, it's pretty unusual. Sure. If you get less than that, you know, you're choosing to take something because you want to take something. So, so, you know, establishing just a basic scale was, was useful. One of the most useful things he said was, you know, there are 
um, a group of about, I mean, actually, I think he actually used the word click, of about 10 to 15 musicians who get a inordinate number of the local gigs. They play in everybody's band. They're good players. They're very, very good players. But, you know, they're trying to support themselves as musicians. And so they're, he didn't say predatory. I'm using the word predatory. You know, that they, <laughs> you know, that, that, you know, if someone's got something going on, A, they would be who you would direct it to for a first call type of thing. Yep. So if someone wants, if someone gets a gig and they want to do something and they want to put together a group with the least amount of friction, this would be the pool of people that you would call. Yeah. And he goes, it's been that way for quite a while that, you know, this, this kind of homogenized group of about 10 to 15 musicians get an inordinate number of the pickup gigs around here. So I, 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 um, I've experienced this before in, in two different ways. Uh, one, of course, it's like, you know, if I think back to the late eighties, early nineties, the New York city studio scene or, or, uh, gigging scene. Right. But also the studio scene, the session scene, it, that's very, that was very common, right? There, there was the A-list, the first call guys that got called for everything and knew each other and knew how to play together. And, you know, you could put them on stage with each other and give, a, you know, a little bit of direction and all set, right? They, they know how to, they're a band in, in a sense. And, and, and then in Austin, I saw a similar thing where, especially when I got there, it, 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 it sort of fizzled out after a few years. I feel like I, I got there at sort of the end of it, but, but there was definitely a, a click of musicians that all were playing in the same bands. And, and some of them are, are people that, you know, like Chris Layton, right. Um, Steve Ray Vaughn's drummer from double trouble. But then there were people like Dave Grissom that, that most people probably don't know. Although those guys both played in a band. Oh gosh, I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. It was a fantastic band. Malford Milligan was the singer. Anyway, you know, there, there was this group of, like you said, maybe 10 to 15 musicians that, that all knew each other, all trusted each other and were all, all could play. And if you hired him, you knew that you were, it was going to be fine. And I never, from my standpoint, it never appeared predatory. So I'm curious that, that you see that, that you're seeing it that way. Is it, is it your interpretation of it or is it actually being predatory? Are they like, no, no, no. I don't have any information. Out? Okay. It's, after, so it's totally my term. Got it. Got it. It's more, it's more like when you move to a new area and you're told this is the way it is, mm -hmm. you kind of look at, you know, especially someone who's, you know, tries to affect situations like that in yeah. life, you know, yeah, 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 um, you yeah. know, I just like, hmm. yeah. um, because you know, like, you know, there are fine players who are out there who just don't have the energy to mm -hmm. make themselves one of those A-list players. Right. That's right. There's plenty of guys. And, and those are really interesting people to find to play. So, you know, there's, here's what the problem that sets up is you can call these people for a gig um, and you know, it's probably a first and second call for, you know, there's probably an A and a B for, yep. for any that you want, but if they're playing 30 bands or 20 bands or 10 bands, they may not be available. So there, you know, there's a, a built in constraint to going into that pool and, you know, it always seems to be kind of a joy of finding and, uh, those people who are every bit as good chops wise, but just aren't that, I guess competitive would be the word. Yeah, you know, to kind of put yeah, they, themselves out there. Yeah, they aren't and marketing themselves. They they right. aren't. And, they aren't they pushing are, for it. Right. And right. you know, the nice thing is, if you find these people and you give them work, you know, they will be loyal to you and they will, totally. you know, help you get to where you're going. So that was another thing. The, the the other point I wanted to bring out is that this is largely a college town down here, mm. and the better paying gigs are college parties. And if you can play music that will get college people to dance, you know, that's a, that's a path to decent money. And um, so there's, I, I think I told you this when I first got here, it seems like there's some oddly strong, and I didn't understand why reggae scene down here. Right. Mm. So yeah, we, you know, it is beach towns. I was going to say, know, it's a little that, bit of a tourist town too. Right. In addition to yeah. the college thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so, you know, there's a, there's a moderately vibrant reggae scene down here and, um, there's blues jams for finding, you know, other musicians, although, you know, that's a mixed bag, right? It's, it's a, uh, yep. you're looking for a needle in a haystack when you, when you go that route, similar to the, if you go the route of, of Craigslist, Craigslist is not active down here. Interesting. Not active, really, really kind of, you know, not much, or, or maybe it's as active as there are people, maybe it's representative. And then there is, you know, one guy who started a business down here that is kind of the glue. He's done a great job 
website, promotes shows, and you know he's really active, and he seems to be the center of the world. Um, uh, it's a, there's a site called BigBigSlow.com, and okay. he you know has a listing of all the bands, and and uh, you know he talks about the gigs and the gig calendars, and he seems to be that really important person in the music community. You know, it's his, it's you know, one of his gigs. And so, right. it's, you know, he, he doesn't do it out of the goodness of his heart, but he does it. And, <laughs> right. um, yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, he, and several of the you know, listing things are, you know, maybe free or, you know, that type of thing, but, you know, and, uh, he was one of those mutual friends that uh, I had who introduced me, mm. a mutual friend introduced us and, um, seems like a really nice guy. And, and, uh, so that's, you know, a, a good nexus, you know, for kind of keeping the networking going. That's good. I mean, these, these things, people and meet people. And yeah, these things can be, it's, I suppose when you've got people who are putting energy into being the stewards of a scene or creating a scene and I stewards Mm -hmm. is my word, they may not see it that way. Right. But you know, when people are doing that, it almost, almost by definition is going to become clicky at some level. Right. Because Mm. generally people that, that want to create this aren't necessarily the people that should be managing it long-term, right? You you know, like the, the big, big SLO thing, we've got some things like that around here and it's, you know, it becomes very clicky because people become very protective of this little fiefdom that they've created. And it's like, well, I I would say this, this is a guy who's kind of raising the the juice. And so naturally people who want to work are going to try and get close to this guy. Of course. And And in that circle, you know, people will, be, you know, concerned that they're not in that circle Mm -hmm. or, you know, they will be bitter as they're trying to get into that circle. I mean, all those kind of human dynamics that go on, you know, that happen. Yeah. The human dynamics that, that, that many people find, many people find themselves in positions of power and, and aren't suited for it. You know, I mean, I, and I, yeah. I mean, I think about it here locally with our youth sports thing, you know, I mean, our, our, like our youth hockey program years and years ago had sort of fallen by the wayside in our town yeah. and somebody stepped in and, and like drove the bus and like almost out of whole cloth created this awesome thing. And then it was terrible because, well, because you become a target for the people who are like, you didn't take me along on this awesome thing. So, and and and, you know, that was kind of my life. He wasn't good at that, right? He was Uh, good at creating it. But then when it was like a, a, an ongoing concern, he was terrible at managing it with the, uh, with small town politics and all of that. Right. And it, it, it almost fell apart again. It was like, Oh, I see how we got, here. <laughs> I know why he had to create it again, but thankfully, you know, he figured it out and he sort of stepped out of the way. But, um, but you, you know, these things happen and it of course happens here too. It's cause you know, most people don't have the training to manage, uh, an organization like that. So yeah, I can, I, I think can this see. big, big slow thing has been going for quite a while and, and this guy's very well liked and yeah. well regarded. So he, he evidently has all those skills. That's, that's a good thing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's rare and well, and, and welcoming when something like that happens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, so yeah. I, I, yeah. I learned about my local scene, you know, again, I can't get out and see people and introduce myself face to face and, right. you know, but, um, you know, a, a couple steps closer, you do what you can during the time that you have, right? You do what you can with the time that you have. That's it. Yeah. 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 And maybe you'll get yourself into this, into that click and then it'll seem like the best thing <laughs> since sliced bread. <laughs> um, well, you know, it's funny cause you can, compa- I compare, what I just learned to where I just came from and how it was. And again, yeah. I think I was kind of in, in the click, you know, up in the Bay area. Sure. Um, but I tried to be aware of it and I always tried to be gracious and, in, in, you know, bring people in, introduce, you know, like that, um, Remember, I do that uh, holiday happy hour where yeah. I invited about 300 musicians. You know, that was, that was one of my efforts to kind of not be that clicky guy, Right. To just be someone who enjoys the company of cool, you know, cool people, cool musicians. And so that was my, uh, uh, you know, one of the things that I tried to do, you know, I tried to do shows and include different musicians than I typically play with. So, I, you know, my heart is in the right place, but I'm sure, you know, people were like, oh, that guy, you know, oh, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure yeah. there are people from a distance. And that's and the thing is, that's just part of the deal. You know? It's part of the deal. That's it. Because at, at some right. point you have to, you know, you start out being very open and in fact, you know, eagerly recruiting people to come to your event. And then suddenly people want to be at your event and you have to, you have to flip to the other side and, and, you know, shield yourself at some level. And mm-hmm. that's where, 
that's where it's, you know, (laughs) that's not as easy for most of us. So, yeah. Yeah. Hey, speaking of clicks, I get to be part of a very small little click. Um, Actually, I get to join the ranks of a, a click that I have wanted to join for a very long time, although I really haven't put in the effort. Uh, I get to speak at NAM next week. I'm very excited. Oh my gosh. Yeah, That's man. Cool. I know. We keep talking about at going. NAM? Well, you know, <laughs> virtually. Or I'm, I'm going to sit right here. But um, mm-hmm. but there is a uh, a series of new product announcements that Mackie is doing. And uh, and one of them will feature a little, uh, a little bit with me. So That's uh, really cool. That's Monday the 18th. So uh, seven, six days from when we're recording this at, at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern or 2 p.m. Pacific. I'll put a link in the in the show notes at Gig Gab Podcast. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, man. Is that Did they come to you as a result of this global domination that we have here in Gig Gab or because of your Mac world relationships? Um, they, podcasting world. I, you know, they have me listed as, as Dave Hamilton of Mac Geek Gab on the thing. Uh, but really, it's my relationship with them because of what we do with this show that um, that that, uh, you know, that, that introduced me to the right people there. We had some conversations and they realized that they've got a new product coming out that it makes sense to have me talk about. And, and it'll be a whole lot clearer. I can't really say anything about what the product is obviously yet because it's not my news to share. Right. You know, uh, so, but, um, but it'll be, it'll be clear why they're, they're pushing me this way and it's not what anybody thinks. So I, am not divulging anything. You'd have to be, you're good at those things. I mean, you're good at uh, not, you ask the, you ask the challenging questions, you interact with your fellow panelists. Is it a panel? No, they, they, it's, it's just me as the special guest to talk about this. Yeah, no, I'm, I, yeah, no, I'm very honored (laughs) to be a part of this and, and yet they're putting me front and center. So, uh, so it should be fun. And there's a, there's maybe another special guest in there too, that that I probably would you work, always be performing into there somewhere. Just, you know, absolutely. Like Carol Uh, Carol Burnett used to tag her ear, but just, you know, just for you and me, just work the tagline in. All right. Yeah. Hang on. I, I have a, I have some notes uh, from, you know, we did a little rehearsal of this the other day. And so I have some notes about things that I want to make sure I mention. And so now that's on the list. (laughs) (laughs) That's perfect. Yeah. Everybody listening, you'll know that it's, it's, it's for you, Paul. And really it's for all of us here. Yeah. There you go. Hey, so we got an email and I, I wasn't sure if we should even approach this, but I, it, it is one of these things that I really think opens up a good conversation to have potentially opens up a good conversation. It it might be a disaster and we might pull the plug on it, but uh, I will take the, the, uh, I will read the email and then we'll, we'll see where we go with it. Sound good, Paul. Yeah. All right. So uh, Mr. Axe, we will, we will call this listener writes in one of my bands. We are, we instead of Mr. X, right? Cause Mr. X is better for musicians, right? Cause our guitars, you, you like it, right? Mr. X mm-hmm. anonymous, mm-hmm. Mr. X. Uh, never mind. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. In one of my bands, we are obviously all friends on social media. It has become clear that another member and maybe more than one, but definitely at least one has a very strong political position for the sake of the story. I'm not going to say what the position is because it doesn't really matter. I have the opposite position, but I would never post anything online about other about that other than maybe liking someone's post who happened to support my position. Unfortunately, there is an ethical morality position here, in my opinion. The other member, who has a different morality position than I do, given some of the posts I've seen him comment on and some of the rhetoric that he uses in his responses. If he was a friend and not a band member, although I consider him both— I would certainly think twice about having a discussion with him about this. Music is personal. Music is a brotherhood and a sisterhood with the people I make it with. And I feel that his belief might overshadow that. He says, I mean that standing side by side with someone in that in standing side by side with someone, is there any inherent endorsement of their position? Do I need to just get over it? And when comments come up at practice, just ignore Should I have an overt conversation with him trying to understand his point of view? He says, I want to say I'm open, but unfortunately I'm having a hard time getting past the morality, ethical issues, thoughts. And to be clear, I want to be, I want to, I feel that I'm pretty much in the middle while this other individual seems to be very much polarized. I don't know if you even want to touch this since it could be a charged topic, (laughs) though I thought I'd throw it out there. So yeah, like I said, I think it's, it's important. I think it's a great question because I've often said that one of the things I like most about playing music is that it, for me personally, it's my easiest path 
for interacting on a meaningful level with people who are of different demographic, financial, you know, social, racial belief structure realms than me. Right. Because it's so easy in life. You just wind up in scenarios with people that are more like you than not like you. Right. It's just how things naturally sort of work. At least they do for me playing music. That's the thing that we have in common. And it tends to I've, I've really been exposed to people of, you know, a much wider range of people because of music than any one other thing. So I really like that. Um, but, you know, it, it at the same time, though, there are things about that that make it less easy, right? Like the financial status, which we talked about on the show here, you know, if, if there's a band of five people and three guys are, you know, all financially solvent and the other two are living check to check, relying on gig money as part of their, you know, rent paying structure that can create a delicate scenario. You know, you got one guy that's like, ah, you know, I don't really want to do that gig and it's, it's no big deal. Now you're making that decision for four other people, two of whom need that money. That can be a little bit, you know, different, but it, but it cuts both ways, right? that exposure to people that are different than you can be good for everybody that's involved. Mm. So, so, th so I like that, that, that I, I, I come, I, I wanted to sort of pave that because I come into this conversation and I, it, I like being in a band with people that are different than me, that force me to think a little bit differently than I might otherwise walking in the door. Um, and I've certainly experienced mixed political views in my bands and I don't think that'll change. But years ago, I made a decision to keep 100% of my political views out of social media and and my my performances, if you will. I consider this show a performance. I consider being on stage a performance, right? All of that stuff. I'm totally fine, as Paul will tell you, having in-person conversations about politics, but I don't do them here. You know, I don't do them on social media. Um, and... I think most people pr that follow me on social media probably think that I agree with them regardless of what their views are. And that's okay by me um, it, because I don't like the division. I, that's, that's to me the ugliest part of it all. Mm. So, you know, my so advice, you, go ahead. Go, no, you finish your thought. Yeah, please. I was going to say my advice to, to Mr. Ax here sort of comes from all that, which might not make it helpful, <laughs> you know, um, if the thing, if politics comes up in a venue where I don't see it as relevant or I don't see it as productive or necessary, I will be the first to to squash it and just be like, hey, we got other stuff to do while we're here. Let's let's, you know, get back on track with band rehearsal. Let's get back on track with whatever that is. And really, my goal is to make it not a part of that thing, just like politics isn't a part of this thing that we do here. It doesn't, you know, there's one band I've played in and currently playing, in fact, where politics is a part of it. And that's Bitter Pill. And it's because Billy's art is rooted in politics, among a few other things. But like his songs are very political, uh, you know, and his. And everybody opted into that. And we all knew it going in. It, it's exactly yeah. right. Yep. And and it's it's totally fine, at least totally fine by me. I'm sure there's some people for whom it's not totally fine. And that's OK. But. You know, I, I am, I don't believe that artists in general, uh, I don't like it. I, I don't want to say what I don't believe. I don't like it when artists in general start spouting off about politics, when that's Ooh. not part of the core of their art, you know, somebody like Dylan or, you know, Woody Guthrie talking about politics. I mean, that's, that's sort of part and parcel. You signed up for that. Right. But, and, and the same with Billy Butler and I, yes, I will put Billy on, on par with Woody and, and. And uh, and Bob, because he writes great songs. Uh, but other than someone whose art is about politics and the two are infused, I, I don't think it has a place there. I, I think you wind up alienating more people than you. Most people aren't good at it. If you're, you know, just because you're good at guitar, just because you're good at writing songs about things other than politics doesn't mean that you're good at talking to people about politics. And, and I and I think it it winds up being a negative more often than a positive. So, and I, like I said, I just don't like the polarizing part of it. So that, that would be, oh, oh, that's, that's my advice is if you don't like it, just refocus, redirect, don't argue, just redirect. That would be my, mm. that that's how I approach it. So I don't know. Okay. So let, you gave me about, I know 16 things to respond to. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, let me start from the front and try and work my, myself mm -hmm. back. So the not, the not good at it thing is an interesting thing. So, uh, just a quick thought on artists. So 
the artists that I tend to like, I'm kind of interested in who they are as a person as to how they create their art. Dylan would be a good example. Bruce would be a good example. I mean, I, I like that, you know, it, that informs the art to me. So I never have an issue, right? I mean, I have an issue if it's hate, like, you know, the Ted Nugent approach, you know, saying he wants to hang somebody and that type of thing. But I mean, if it's a, if it's an interesting thought and it informs their art that it, that doesn't bother me at all, but I hear it a lot that, you know, just shut up and sing. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not that guy. Right. And, uh, you know, the artist knows the risk they're taking by not shutting up and singing. And they're like, if you don't want to buy my ticket. And I guess that leads me to something that I find in my band as really interesting. I've am always, you know, like I'm the guy out hustling for gigs. Yep. I am always remarkably and pleasantly reminded when someone in my band will say no to a gig on a, on, based on a principle. Like these are guys who, you know, this is part of their money, right? Sure. And I'm always right. reminded that, that when the guys protect their art, at the expense of, or not so I want to say protect their art, what they, when they are willing to not do the thing they love to do so much because something crosses the line for them, that is always a very refreshing reminder about how important the art is. And that, you, that, that is actually part of safeguarding it, is where do, you, where do you want to do your art? So this might get to Mr. Axe's point. So the... The other point, you know, like this is where I would have started if you hadn't said so many interesting things. And I should say that you know, <laughs> you're in my, you're in my uh, political discussions are interesting because you, as a smart person, and you have very well formed things, and it is a it, it is an actual calculation of you know whether it's worth it for you to get into it with people these sort of things. But yeah. but you have like, <laughs> it's like a calculation. if someone can crack your nut, they're going to learn quite a bit. It, even if they don't agree with it, they're going to get a very, very different perspective. You know, your your perspective on local politics versus national politics has informed me quite a bit and um, makes me think, which is that's the good stuff that should be happening. Make right. That, that, those are the conversations I like. The ones where both people come away thinking. Yes, exactly. Yep. However, uh, the genie's out of the bottle, right? Like between social media and the political climate that has been building longer than the last four years. I mean, I, oh, I it's think this is, it's 30 12 years. years, 16. Well, you know, but as social media has been a, a, a megaphone for people. Sure. I think we live in a time today that is probably not unlike right after the civil war. We all know who everybody is. You know, we, you know, pretty much, you yeah. know, know who's across the table from us and are making value judgments because everybody letting each other know who they are in a very emphatic way. Um, Everybody thinks they're principled, right? Everybody thinks their principles are the right ones, right? Totally. Well, um, it, it, you know, I, I, I won't attribute the quote because it'll probably upset some people if I did. And I'd rather let the quote stand on its own. But being right feels exactly the same as being wrong. Like in your head, you, you don't know whether you're right or wrong. You know you're right, but you could be 100% uh, wrong and it feels the same. So, right. there's, you know, it's interesting, right? It is interesting. So... The genie is out of the bottle. Everybody's values are all out on display. Um, and that's what we live with. Now, this issue, uh, and, and I say, you know, like after the Civil War, like, I know you were for slavery. I know you were not for slavery. You know, how sure. dare you not be for slavery? How dare you be for slavery? Right. Um, that is out, you know, and, and it has transcended. And our all of our personal brands are now tied up with um, the moral and ethical um, decisions that we make. And I'm trying really carefully because I, of course, have a very strong opinion about this, as you know. No, Dave. I think you're doing a great job, to be perfectly well, honest. I'm trying to this just tap great. and just say, yeah. this, is the, this is the world we live in right now. Acknowledging the realities. That's it. There you go. Yep. And, you know, so I think about, you know, some guys in my band would probably not choose to play in a band because they would not want to do their art along with someone that makes them feel icky about the world. Um, and they may, they, I, 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 they would do that. I, I think probably I have one guy who's in my band, whose um, beliefs are, are, he's let it be known through some posts, but he never brings it into rehearsal. Yep. And, um, that's okay. Sure. Right. He's sure. not in my face about things and he's not, uh, disrupting rehearsal. 
So, you know, I'm going to put my band, we're, we're not just a bunch of at will friends. We are a, like an ongoing concern that has a, yeah. you know, a financial upside of, of staying connected. And so there's that. So, and again, the vibe of our band, you know, someone who was so diverse from the rest of us would have found his way out, you know, if he needed to, you know, argue his points, but the question comes is what, you know, what is your band? And we spend more time talking about communication or anything. Yeah. If your band is a financial concern, do you want to say, listen, no politics in the band. We have to agree to that. You know, keep your, you know, like, like, like has mostly been done for most of the rest of American history. You know, don't bring your politics to work. Right. That is one, one right. approach to it. Yeah. That, right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That, 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 yep. That makes sense. However, you do have this thing where even if the guy doesn't bring it to work, you can, you will be exposed to it and it's going to make you feel some way. If he chooses to, Which to, people do. to talk about them publicly elsewhere. Right. No, that's what I'm saying is like, not everybody makes that choice, but a right. lot of people do. You're right. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, I, and for the, for the record, about- I don't fault that choice. I understand <laughs> why people want to talk about politics on social media. I just, I just don't, <laughs> but it's, well, that's think, more I about me. Yeah. I think like for me, my internal BS meter, my internal fairness, you know, meter pings. And then I, I you know, and I actually haven't made a, a political post on my own page. I've decided to try and not do that. Like I, sure. I can't leave Facebook entirely because I just have too much vested in, in, you know, driving gig interest and that type of thing. And, you know, you, I built yeah. some thousand people, you know, audiences. Um, but I haven't made a post since election day. And, um, and that's okay. It's good. It was unhealthy. It was untenable. Nothing, nothing, nothing is, nothing's happening. Sure. So the two things, the two things that, uh, you, you know, I'm not changing anybody's mind. So right. the two things that I think are our tasks in navigating this, and I, I will bring this back to playing in a band and, and dealing with this is, you know, one, um, is it sustainable? You know, can we go about unfriending D, you know, not working with, people who think differently than us, or is there some magical way that we can say, Hey, you know, we got a pretty good thing here. We should agree to, you know, be aware of what our differences uh, could do to that pretty good thing. And uh, can we, are we on the same page that we want to nurture this good thing? Because our politics, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to change each other's minds and we're probably not going to change anybody who doesn't think like us mind. Um, So, you know, do we want to hold it up to the light as the risk of the, what this is causing us fair? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I, I like that's, that. That's what, yeah. that's what I think the, the, the saving it conversation, but there is certainly like, you know, if you found someone was in favor of cruelty to animals and you're a big animal advocate, I don't know how you make your art, you know, standing next to somebody like that. And, you might want to make a difficult choice that uh, your art is worth protecting the pleasure of playing your art. You know, I, I don't, I don't know if someone who is so diametrically opposed to my values, if I could, if I can make music with, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would agree with that in, in, in principle. I, um, the, the, I suppose the thing is, and this, this comes back to my, dislike of turning everything into a binary scenario is I have yet to truly meet someone, especially in a band scenario that is diametrically opposed to me. Uh, you know, that certainly uh, there are people. Wait, that- I'm, I'm going to pause you right there because I'm going to ask you a really interesting question. Yeah. You seem to be keenly aware that you can operate in the land between, you know, point A and point B. Yes. Are you aware that most humans are not, they have to, they have to pick the point that, you know, represents their worldview. And that's all, that's all that they can do. You're either with me or against me is, right. you know, most people are black and white. Yeah, no, it, it, I, and I, I dislike that. I realize it's a byproduct of human nature, mostly, although we've really leaned in on it in the last, you know, it, m- we've been leaning in more and more to it over the last few decades. And it's, it's hit ahead as, as we've seen, you know, it's crazy. Uh, But yeah, I, I dislike that. I find that polarization really ugly. So, and that's about the most political thing you'll ever hear me say on, on a show like this. Uh, And so I, I really work to not be that, you know, entrenched in, in one 
camp or another. I, I have my beliefs. My beliefs are kind of crazy. I, I don't really think I agree with anyone, to be perfectly honest. Uh, <laughs> you, you really don't want to. Maybe part of the reason I don't share my politics is I don't think anybody actually wants to know them. Uh, <laughs> so, Well, they want to know if you're on their team or on the other team. Yeah, but I'm, that's what I'm saying is people either. Most people think I'm on their team, um, even if they're two <laughs> people that disagree on what team they are each on. Uh, but the reality is I'm probably not on anybody's team uh, because I, I they it well, there's a whole lot of reasons for that, but um, um, so so there's like I've never been in a band with someone that wants to you know literally hang people. I've never been in a band that with someone that wants to enslave people. I've never been in a band with somebody who wants to hurt animals. Like the, these scenarios that you come up with, it would, that would actually be quite frankly very easy. Like if somebody was out there, you know, posting about how they were being cruel to animals, it'd be really easy to walk for me to walk away from that, right? There you <laughs> like, go. Yeah, but. But, you know, for the most part, the people that I'm involved with you, as you get to know someone, they become less about the caricature of themselves and more about this, you know, very three dimensional person. And, yeah, there might be a thing here or there where we would disagree, but it's you. I've never found myself in a band with somebody that was just like and maybe I haven't found myself in a band with someone like Mr. Axe. Right. To be fair. Uh, but I've I've never found myself in a band with someone that I couldn't have a conversation with. Uh, well, I thought his note was actually quite thoughtful. Yeah. I mean, I, oh, absolutely. Right? Very much yeah. so. Yeah. And, and you know, that gives us a little insight into where he's coming from and, you know, his perspective on this. So, you know, it must be something that's fairly incensing to him. So yeah. I, I'm going to this whole thing, you know, about what is the path of us as people? What is the path of us as musicians? Right. So how much are we going to get better at the skill of examining our worldviews and understanding that almost everything, every decision we make is shaped by it, right? right. Like you, you, you doom scroll through Twitter, Twitter and you're looking for things that, that make you feel good because they agree with your worldview, right? How, how good are people going to get at recognizing that be careful about putting someone in that box as bad because they're not in your world. Now, again, you know, animal cruelty seems to be a pretty easy one for you and I to put on without getting too terribly political. Right. Most people would say it's bad. If someone, if someone, you know, organizes dog fights, yeah. you know, like you said, I don't think I could play with them. So where is your line as a thoughtful, creative human being, as a musician, you know, really giving a lot of thought to that line, you know, as so, you know, what it is. And I, I, I guess where I come to is that, yeah, there are some things in life that I couldn't be creative with someone. It's too important yeah. to me to sacrifice my personal beliefs with this icky feeling coming to me that someone would be, that someone would be so staunchly for things that are really my line. But, you know, I would want to think about what my line is, right? Well, that's, you know, the, that's the thing. I, I guess what I find is that everyone, including me, everyone is a hypocrite at some level. And mm -hmm. so to, you know, to completely abolish someone from my life for being a, a hypocrite. Well, well that, that sort of puts me in the same boat. Everyone. Right? Yeah. Hypocrisy it, isn't the thing. No, right? it's, but, it, but, it, but that's the thing is, is like, there's this, and again, that's why it's easy for me to talk about like cruelty to animals. It's like, okay, but there are some people that, that want to do dog fights. Like that's a great example. People don't see that as being, some people don't see that as being cruel. I couldn't be involved in that. Right. Like that's a, that's a pretty obvious thing for me, for me, right. but I don't mean it to be obvious to everyone else, but it is to me. And I guess but that's, for example, take the things that are, um, someone has a deep religious belief about something and you're not religious. And so you don't share that belief. Sure. I still believe it is possible for someone to take a situation like that and say, that's a good person. It is their belief system, you know, and they have a, they have a decent reasoning behind that belief system, you know, that works for them. Yeah. And, you know, th those are the ones that we used to be able to just say, well, you know, we believe different now it's, everything's a world war right. and it's really hard. So, but you know, here's the flip side of this. Should Mr. Axe be the only guy doing the deep introspection on it? I don't think that's fair either. That's going to lead to bitterness and, and you know, that, that's going to. That, no, that's Mr. Cool. Mr. Axe needs to make the decision for himself as everyone, as, as each of us do. Right. Like Mr. Axe. And there's, you know, there's nothing. Clearly, we've identified some things here 
some that, that I haven't articulated because we aren't going to get into it, but there are some things that I could not be in a band uh, with someone about, including things that, you know, happen politically in the world. Uh, thankfully, I have not been put in that scenario. And perhaps that's the, that's the realization I've come to as we've had this conversation is yes, I've been in bands with people that feel differently than me about a variety of topics, politics, religion, styles of music one wants to play, right? Like, you know, and, and I've, I've always been able to reconcile that because of who they are and how it is either a part of or not a part of what we are doing together with that thing. But clearly there are things that I could not stand for and would walk away from. Um, and if Mr. X feels like if you feel like you're in one of those scenarios, well then by all means walk away from it. Yeah. Well, uh, or let me, or let me address it here. with that person. Well, yeah. that's it. So yeah. let's, 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 you know, rather than the temptation to make this the flavor of the day of how politics has poisoned our, our, our communities and our ability to direct here, here's a, here's a more holistic way to look at it. Anything that gets in the way of you expressing yourself to the, to the greatest, your greatest potential creatively needs to be dealt with right dealt with can mean a whole bunch of stuff yep if your yep. leader is late paying you and it's bugging you and you're you're now starting to question whether he's screwing you that has to be dealt with right yep. if, a, if a guy's late to rehearsal and he's eating into your time and you know that has to be dealt with it, it, i think i think maybe it diffuses it a little bit because right now there is the question is should i or shouldn't i deal with it or how how should i so let's cross one off deal with it Right. Anything that gets in the way of you being your best creatively, you got to deal with some way. So, yes, go into it. Yep. And if you have a problem with someone else and it's, you know, a, and especially if a band is a democracy. So, again, if the band is everybody get to vote, this is a band conversation. Right. That's and, right. Yeah. And, it, and if it's a leader thing, you go to the leader and say, hey, you know, I'm feeling something about this. What do you want to do about it? And he'll tell you. And when people tell you who they are, you believe them. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> right? you have to, so, yeah, right. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, this is, this is where you're choosing to work. So I think that that might be the most useful yeah, there you go. optic and in, optic into it. Like if anything is getting in the way of you joyously emoting your art, it has to be dealt with. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Absolutely. Just because it's politics is no different than, it, yeah. you know, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. If we, if we homogenize the conversation, then it's, it's way easier to talk about. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But it's, oh, it's politics. You know, we, th this is some taboo thing that's going to cause a thing. Well, anything can cause a thing. So. Yeah. I mean, it really like the, the, the idea of, you know, two people in a band that are diametrically opposed to the type of music they want to play together. Like that, that is a conversation. Would you, would you avoid having that conversation? Probs not right. Like I, I guess the, the, and you've said this, the, the thing you need to decide is, is this something that is going to get in the way of you doing your art together? Or is it not going to get in the way? And if it's not going to, then maybe you leave it alone. If it is going to, and it's okay, if it is, then address it. That's it. There you go. That's it. You want to make it binary? We just did it. There you go. We solved all the world's well, problems, Paul. It's amazing. Well done. Well done. <laughs> nice you should be on a panel at NAM. I know. <laughs> Let me get right on that. <laughs> uh, well, hopefully that uh, hopefully that offended everyone equally. That's really all no, I'm looking no for. No doubt. Right? No. That's, that's yeah, we blew it all up. Yeah. <laughs> Always be arguing. Always be arguing. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Well, that's what I got for today. I, I, I don't know that I can I have anything to to, to wrap exhausting, around that. That's exhausting. It is. But yeah. but these things are important. You know, if the, if there's something bugging you that's keeping you from engaging. I mean, I you know, I think about that bass player I didn't like playing with that was brought into the band. And I, you know, would set up at the I realized after three gigs, I'd set up at the gig and make it so I couldn't hear him. <laughs> and it was like, wait, why am I leaving my family you know, I got little kids that I miss. Why am I, you know, doing this? It's I'm not doing it for the money. I'm doing it because I love playing, <laughs> except I don't yeah. find this fun. And I talked to the band leader and was just like, yeah, call me when, when that guy's not on, on the gig. And, and they were like, yeah, sure. No problem. It was, it was fine. It was a scenario where that was not an issue to do. And I knew that, you know, and so it was just like, yeah, great. No problem. I understand. Okay, cool. You know, 
that was it. So, yep. <laughs> Deal with it. Whatever it is. But an out of tune bass player, man, that can't keep time. Oh, I don't know. I can't, I can stomach a lot of things. Clearly, as I've said that I cannot stomach. Tuning, tuning sensitivity is, is a, is usually a go, no go for many musicians yeah, totally. as much as political differences, as much as, oh, if not more than clearly right. for me. Yeah. Yeah. At some level it's more than, yeah. But whenever I sing, I listen to the bass player. Like that's, I, I, it's not necessarily an intentional thing, but it is where my head goes in the moment trying to find, you know, my harmonic reference, especially singing harmonies. You know, I'm obviously listening to the lead so I can blend with, with the lead, but I, I start with just the way my brain works. I start with the bass and if the bass is out of tune or the bass player is being, you know, creative and playing something at that moment, that's like not part of the chord structure, you know, that, that, I've had, I've had the discussion, even like in fling with Burke, there've been a few key moments in songs where I've realized, Hey, wait a minute, man, you know, can you hit the root for me on just on that beat? Like, you know, everywhere else do whatever you want to do. But as we come into the chorus, can you hit the root for me so that I know where I am? And he's like, yeah, of course. Right. You know, like mm -hmm. those kinds of things. Um, so yeah. So having a bass player that was always out of tune and, and then also couldn't keep time. It was like, this is stupid. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As I, as I finished setting up my monitors so that I couldn't hear him and then went, th went to the bar to get an extra shot before we played. So as to make myself not care as much. Uh, that's when I realized I'm like, what am I doing here? This is not healthy. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. That's what I got, man. You got anything else? We're good. We're good. All right, folks. Well, uh, wish me luck at, uh, at Nam. Although I think we will probably record an episode of this right before I go and do that. But uh, but I wanted to tell you this week because you probably won't hear the next one in time. So, yeah, man, that's what I got. Have Thanks. Fun. Yeah, fun. Represent. I will. Absolutely. Always be performing, too. I will make sure of it. And I will make sure I make sure everybody knows. Have a good week, folks. Be good to each other out there. Please. 